Howdy. My name is Michael Escobar, and I'm out here shooting with Brad Knox. Mr. Edkins, this one's for you and for science. Gig em. So now we're going to explain the physics behind shooting a heavy load out of a very light gun and how that affects the recoil. Okay, here we can see the, uh, the diagram of the coach gun. Now this gun is exceptionally light due to its shorter barrel and its uh, much shorter stock so we shaved a lot of weight off there. And I fired two extremely heavy uh, double odd buck loads which had uh, a lot of just big lead pellets that it was shooting towards Mr. Watermelon over there. And the, uh, the force of all of that lead going that way uh, and the light gun really had a lot more recoil and forced the gun rearward at me, as you can see in the video. And pushed it, him back like it, this. Yeah. So this is a 10 millimeter. We've come down to this darker area in this creek so that we can show you how the compensator works. You'll be able to see the muzzle flash, hopefully. Basically, as the bullets fly traveling out of the barrel, all of the uh, gas, the escaping gas from the barrel, is forced up, funneled up by this compensator with these holes. It's easier for it to go up, and it pushes the gun down as the energy of the gas goes up. That reduces the recoil on my small hands for the large gun, making it more possible to shoot this gun. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how the compensator on the 10 millimeter redirects the gas flow coming out of the barrel and pushes the barrel down. Okay, so when the gun is fired, the round is pushed out the barrel by expanding gases here. The bullet gets going forward. As the expanding gases get to the compensator, a portion of it gets sent up, pushing the gun barrel down, and this portion pushes the gun barrel back. The slide starts to come back with the uh, shell from the inertia from uh, it being fired. That is also pushing the gun back, but it's pushing it up. The expanding gases, the, or the forces cancel out, so the expanding gas is pushing it down and the slide pushing up and back. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Oh, okay. Now we're going to talk about the 375 harmonics and how the barrel accurizer adjusts the harmonics of the barrel. Alright, here we're going to show y'all how the, uh, the harmonic wave flows through the rifle as it's shot. Um, just like we learned, I mean, it, it creates a wave that goes all the way through and then it has a uh, one that kind of reciprocates. Um, and the points here are the uh, the nodes where there are points where there is zero vibration on the rifle, as you can see here. Uh, then we have the center line here, and then the green is the harmonic wave. Now the accurizer, what it does is a small screw that applies tension right here in the barrel. Now what that does is that allows you to manipulate where exactly the nodes fall on the rifle. So that allows you to get more or less vibration near the muzzle, which, I mean, you want to time it so that the bullet, as the bullet flies out, there is zero vibration at the end of the muzzle so that it has the truest path out of the barrel. I'm going to explain why that's important. So the crown of your muzzle is the last place that the bullet's touching the barrel. So it's the last influence from the gun to the bullet before it enters flight. That is the most important time, and that is also the most crucial point of the entire gun, at least the barrel. 
So there, if your barrel's harmonics is pushing up, down, left, right, or at any minute of angle, the bullet will not fly on the correct path to the target and it will cause a dispersion and pattern like such. So you may have your target here, but your bullets will fly in a group all the way out here, which we measured for the average distance between them. So you may have a three MOA group. When you tighten the accurizer and you adjust where the node is towards the crown of the barrel, you can tighten your group so you can have your target here and have a tighter group and you could have one MOA instead. And that would, of course, become one inch at 100 yards, two inches at 200 yards, 300, which would be three inches, and so forth. Okay, now, this is the small 357. This is the large 357 Magnum. Alright, so now we're going to discuss how shooting the same round through both a light and a heavy pistol will illustrate uh, F equals MA, being that the force coming out of the pistols is the same, but the masses are different. So the felt recoil on your hand and the acceleration of the pistol is going to vary for the light and the heavier pistol. Okay, so here's the basic information we were given. We have the large revolver and the small revolver. Small revolver weighs 17.1 ounces, which is approximately 484 kilograms. The large revolver weighs 36 ounces, which is approximately 1.02 kilograms. Both handguns were firing the same cartridge and bullet or projectile, which had the energy of 550 foot pounds. Uh, 550 foot pounds uh, approximates to about 745 newton meters. So if we do the math, you can see here that he has 745 newton meters. Uh, 0.484 kilograms and A. So if you divide 745 by 0.484, you get approximately 1,539.26 meters per second squared. And uh, down here, we have 745 newton meters and then 1.02 kilograms of A. And this one comes out to be about 730 uh, more or less meters per second squared. And we can see how the change in mass equates to all, almost a, a double in ex felt acceleration with the large revolver, of course, being less acceleration because of the more mass and the lighter revolver having a much greater acceleration because of less mass. And when shooting a handgun, the acceleration almost equals the felt recoil. So the felt recoil of the smaller revolver is, like he said, doubled. And this is all because of physics, force equals MA. So here on the, the last video that you guys saw, we really didn't think about the physics behind it. We just kind of wanted to blow some stuff up, as uh, you can see by our diagram there. But uh, yeah. Boom! Two, three. Okay, so now we're gonna use this 300 blackout, which is a high velocity round, to shoot the special watermelon over there. Two, one. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us, y'all. Gig them. America.
Give, give us a countdown. Okay, so here's the basic information that we're given. We have the large revolver and the small revolver. We have our equation F equals MA. The small revolver weighs 17.1 ounces, which is 0.484 kilograms. The large revolver weighs 36 ounces, which is 1.02 kilograms. I need to stop. I realize that I don't know the answers to this. I don't have a calculator. Okay, so here's the basic information we were given. We have the larger revolver and the small revolver. The small revolver weighs 17.1 ounces, which is approximately 0.484 uh, kilograms. The large revolver weighed 36 ounces and is approximately 1.02 kilograms. Both of them were firing the same projectile, which had a. Uh, can we start over? Okay, so now we're going to use this 300 blackout to shoot a special watermelon over there. 